Welcome to Lecture 2 in the Accounting Lecture Series. In this lecture, we will continue to keep track of transactions using the balance sheet and introduce the income statement. This lecture is based on the book The Accounting Game, written by Daryl Mulis and Judith Orloff. Let's review where we were when our previous mini lecture ended. We created a balance sheet for our lemonade business. The balance sheet tells us that we currently have $28 in cash and $2 in inventory. Total assets are $30. On the right side of our balance sheet, our notes payable category under liabilities tells us that we still owe $10 to mom and dad. Owner's equity includes our original investment of $5 and our earnings week to date of $15 from our first sales event. The right side also totals $30 so we are in balance. It was a rough awakening for you this morning because mom and dad decided you ought to know that running a business does not happen without facing expenses. They decided to charge you $2 to rent their glasses. Tough love. Your best friend witnessed that your lemonade stand was quite successful, so she decided she wants $1 for the sign she designed for you. You also noticed yesterday that there was more foot traffic on the corner of the street, so you decide you would like to move your lemonade stand to the neighbors. You talk to them and agree on a $2 fee to rent this upgraded location. Let's make sure we update our balance sheet with this new information. You had to pay $2 to rent the glasses from your parents, $1 in advertising for the sign, and $2 to rent the corner location. What do we call these items? We call them expenses. How do these expenses affect our balance sheet? I suggest you pause the video and try to answer this question first by yourself. The way our expenses affect our balance sheet is through cash and earnings. This means having less money in the pocket after all the business expenses have been paid for. Because of our expenses, which total $5, our cash has gone down from $28 to $23 and our earnings week to date have gone down from $15 to $10. Expenses are the costs of doing business other than those related to producing your product. We pay for our expenses using our cash. We'll discuss buying on credit later. Our expenses also reduce our earnings, which is the money that is left after we have taken care of all our costs. You want to pay mom and dad back before they decide to charge you interest should you need another lesson in business. You put the $10 in an envelope and turn it to them. Mom returns the paper that said he owed them money to you. What has changed on our balance sheet? You can pause the lecture and try to answer this for yourself first. Our cash has gone down by $10 to $13. Notes payable was also reduced from $10 to $0. Total assets as well as total liabilities plus owner's equity, both become $15. We are back in balance. Would you normally fill out a balance sheet every single time you have a transaction? No. How often a balance sheet is filled out varies from business to business. Banks, since they handle a great deal of money, do it on a daily basis. Some other businesses do it weekly, monthly, quarterly, or yearly. Does the balance sheet show you what your sales were for the week? No, I don't see sales anywhere. Does it tell you what the cost of goods sold is or how much inventory you bought and sold? No, it only tells me what I currently have in inventory. Does it tell you how much you paid for your expenses? No, I cannot find my expenses of the glass rental fee, advertising or land rental anywhere. Does it tell you how you made your earnings? No, it only tells me what my earnings week to date are, not how I made them. Events like buying inventory, making your product, selling it, and incurring expenses are happening over time. What statement shows such changes over time and has a beginning and an end? That's the income statement. Therefore, we can think of the income statement as a movie. What alternative names for an income statement do you think there are? Feel free to pause the lecture to answer for yourself. One can also refer to an income statement 
by the names operating statement and profit and loss statement. How do we generate income in our business? Through sales. Did it cost us anything to produce our lemonade? It sure did. What do we call these costs? We call them costs of goods sold or COGS. What do we get when we subtract COGS from our sales? Gross profit. Why is this called gross profit? Well, we have other costs than only the costs to produce our lemonade. How do we get from gross profits to net profits? We have to subtract our expenses. Expenses are the cost of being in business, regardless of whether or not we sell a single glass of lemonade. What are some other names for net profit? The bottom line, earnings, and net income are all synonyms for net profit. An income statement separates costs in two categories. Cost of goods sold for all the costs of producing our product and expenses for all the non-production costs of running the business. Contrary to a balance sheet, which is like a snapshot, an income statement is like a motion picture. It has a beginning and an end. The length of time covered by the income statement is also called the accounting period. Since you plan to continue selling lemonade through the summer, we will use a week as our accounting period. Let's try to make an income statement. You can print an empty income statement that looks like this one by going to Google Drive and looking for the income statement document. I strongly recommend you try to build it yourself before moving on, so you can discover where you struggle. You can use the next slide, which has an overview of everything that happened in week one, to try to fill the blanks of the income statement template. You will have to build a balance sheet, an income statement, and a cash flow statement for your accounting homework and during the final exam, so you should try to get all practice you can. Here is an overview of everything that happened in week one. Let's go over these items one by one and see whether they are relevant to the income statement and how they affect the income statement. The first item is your $5 investment in your business. Let's take a look at our income statement. Where can our $5 investment go? You can pause the recording to think about it. Our original investment of $5 does not belong in the income statement because it did not affect our earnings. It belongs on the balance sheet. It also belongs on the cash flow statement because it involved cash. We will discuss the cash flow statement later on. Let's look at the next thing that happened last week. You loaned $10 from mom and dad. They did not charge interest. Let's take another look at the income statement. Where should this $10 loan go? You can pause the recording to try to answer this question yourself first. Similar to the $5 original investment, the $10 loan also does not belong on the income statement because it did not affect our earnings. Let's move on to the next item. You bought lemons for $10 and sugar for $2. Let's see if this affects our income statement. Since purchasing inventory is a cost to produce our goods that affects our earnings, this item does belong on the income statement. We can add $2 for the sugar and $10 for the lemons under purchases. Since we did not have any inventory at the start of this week, we can also fill out a zero there. You then made 60 glasses of lemonade from your entire inventory. How does that affect our income statement? We can now add that we have our entire inventory, which costs $12, available for sale as finished goods. The next thing you did was actually sell lemonade. Recall that of the 60 glasses of lemonade that you made, you were able to sell 50. 10 were unsold and remain in inventory. It is important to include inventory on the income statement because we should only take into account the cost of our goods sold when we try to calculate our earnings or net profit. The cost of goods manufactured should not be used if not all of our manufactured goods were actually sold in the same accounting period. Since we spent $12 to produce our 60 glasses, our per unit production cost was $12 divided by 60 glasses or 20 cents per glass. We have 10 glasses of lemonade remaining in inventory, which are valued at 10 times 20 cents, which equals $2.
We can now also calculate our gross profit, which is sales minus COX, or $25 minus $10. This means we have $15 in gross profit. The next thing that happened was that you incurred expenses. $2 to rent your parents' glasses, $1 to pay for advertising, and $2 to rent your neighbor's land where you put your stand. Since these expenses affect earnings, they belong on the income statement. So we will add them under expenses. We can now also calculate our net profit, which equals gross profit minus expenses, or $15 minus $5, which is $10 in net profit. You will have realized by now that the balance sheet and the income statement are quite different. However, there are a few similarities between them. First, our net profit in the income statement is the same as earnings week to date in the balance sheet. Second, ending inventory in the income statement is the same as inventory under assets on the balance sheet. Checking these two entries and comparing them to see whether or not they are the same provides you with one way in which you can potentially identify whether you have made mistakes. When we take our earnings week to date and blow it up in a way that explains how we got to those earnings week to date, we produce the income statement. Next week, the ending balance sheet of week one will become the beginning balance sheet for week two. And what is it that will connect the beginning and ending balance sheets for week two? Indeed, our income statement for week two, which will explain what happened in week two in terms of our sales, costs, and expenses, just like in a movie. The beginning balance sheet shows us where we started. The ending balance sheet shows us where we ended. And the income statement shows us how we got there. There is one item that occurred this week that does not show up on our final balance sheet or on the income statement. Can you identify what that item is? Please pause the recording to think about this yourself first. It is the loan payback to mom and dad. Why is the loan not on the balance sheet? It is paid back. We no longer owe it under liabilities, and it's also gone under cash. Why is it not on the income statement? Well, we did not earn it, so the principal shouldn't go on there. We did not incur expenses, so it did not affect earnings. What would have affected earnings? Well, if mom and dad had decided to charge interest. What was affected both when you got and paid the loan? Cash flow. We'll talk about the cash flow statement later on. 